Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Power. Ten Sentence Stories. In this Power series of Ten Sentence Stories, published in David Bowles' blogs at bowlesblogs.com, we examine the nature of power and how it surrounds us. In our first story, we are taken back to the time of Mitt Romney and Bain Capital. And we use the idea of Bain, the bad guy in the Batman series, to help us tell this tale. Bain of the GOP, 10 Sentence Story, number 160. Originally published July 18, 2012. Bane came upon a darkened land and prepared to sink it deeper into the mire with vicious policies against the poor and favors for those who took to evil such as he. In Bane's twisted world, upside down was right side up, There is no global warming. The rich need not pay taxes. The poor do not deserve universal health care. And Bain set about to bring his dim worldview to a scorched nation of debtors and the indentured. He raised more money than hope. He told more scathing lies than any ordinary man ever could, and thought nobody noticed the contradictions in his incoherence against humanity. However, Bain could not run from his past. The trail of blood in paper was too thick to escape, and the heft of lost lives pulled him deeper down into the tar, like a moral anchor from which there was no redemption. The people rose up to strike him down and down and down again. As Bane lay dying, last gasping for the sweet scent of fresh air from an alive world above him. He was overtaken with the loneliness of his cruel deceptions, and the breath of life threaded from his lips like a final wisp of smoke from a dying coal mine. And as the world danced on Bane's grave, the wise and the four seers stood watch, knowing he would be back soon, but in a different form, and be more dangerous than ever. Money never dies. It only regurgitates into inherited wealth. Bane is dead, but never gone. In our second story, we are met by a young boy named Barry, who would later aspire to touch the great heights of a nation in desperation. Modern Day Morality Parable Ten Sentence Story Number 103 Originally published November 24, 2010. When Barry was young, he was fit. He ran, he laughed, he played the fife, and his back was rigid and strong as a bayonet. One day, a bully knocked him down and split his lip. Barry rose to his feet wiping spit from his bleeding tongue and, as he was taught, offered his other cheek. The bully punched him harder on the turn cheek, and the bully kicked him in the knee 
and twisted his arm and shoved him down a rocky embankment into the river below where Barry landed broken, bruised in the water with a jellified spine. As the bully bounded down the mountain with a hammer in one hand and a pitchfork in the other for a final meeting in the river, Barry sank into the water and pulled himself into the depths. There was no sound. There was no light. There was only Barry there, alone and bleeding and dying to fight back. And he felt his black skin shimmering in the glazing cold, and he knew then that if he ever wanted to breathe to live again, he'd have to find a way, anyway, to break the bullies and honor the loyal while dog paddling down a lonely river in the rain. He rose up from the water with a gasp and surprised the bully. Barry grabbed the pitchfork and plunged its steely tines deep into the belly of the bully. Gassy expletives mixed with excrement and whiskey shot into the night air and rained satisfaction down on Barry as he pushed the corpse down into the deep water to sink forever. And in our final story today, the ramifications of splinter politics raises its ugly heel and hand to us. Teabaggery and Tyranny Ten-sentence story number 136 First published August 3, 2011 A gang of misfits hold an entire nation hostage. They do not want to pay for what the previous misfits approved. Teabaggery is the new tyranny, and the banks and the tycoons are protected, while the young and the aged suffer in their insufferable hands. Even when they win, they complain. We all lose under their burned tea thumbs. Unfortunately, we have a president who prefers a mauling to a righteous fight, and so he splinters his left while solidifying the right against him. We, the middle, are left alone to fend for ourselves using our frozen salaries and our rising costs of living to bat away the biting cold and the collector's hand. Nobody we elected cares to do anything whatsoever to protect us from an impending doom. One wonders if we can have a human revolution without an economic meltdown. Will the peasants rise against their oppressors? Or have we all already been suitably forever dunked. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.